I'm standing on the inside of a meander here, or as if we're going to use a key term, this is called the slip off slope. You can see it's a gradual angle down into the river, and this is where the river flows slowest. So on this side, the river is shallowest. That means more friction, which means again that the river is slower, so deposition can occur. Whereas on the other side of the river, the flow is much faster. So therefore there's more erosion, more hydraulic action, more abrasion, which makes the river channel deeper, which again means less friction and a faster river flow. That erosion causes a steep outside bank known as a river cliff. And as that undercuts and erodes further, we'll get collapses and that meander will get bigger and bigger. So this channel is migrating in that direction. And then that could potentially lead to the formation of an oxbow lake as that meander gets bigger and bigger. Moving into if we're studying A level, we might want to talk about the term pools. So on the outside of a meander where it's deep, we refer to that as a pool. We also might want to talk about the word thalweg. That's the fastest line of flow. So obviously here it's on the outside of the meander. And as we move downstream, that will swing back round to the other side of the meander. Another term we might want to talk about at A level is the term riffle. A riffle is found between meanders. And that's a section where we might get small, I'm not going to call them rapids, but a little bit of rough flow where the river speed decreases. Uh, that's where some of maybe the eroded material is deposited because the flow isn't as fast in that straighter section. So that causes a little bit more turbulent flow. How to draw a meander. So firstly, we're going to draw a bird's eye view, an aerial view of a meander. I'm going to add in that, this is particularly important for A level, the foul way. The foul way is the fastest flow of water, the fastest line in terms of velocity. I'm now going to add in pools. And in between, I'm going to add in riffles. So these are particularly important for A-level IGCSE or GCSE. These are not going to be asked. We're then going to draw a cross-section. So I always tell my students to draw a Nike tick. Obviously, be very careful. A Nike tick matches in this example because this is the outside of the meander if in an exam they gave you this meander you'd have to reverse that tick shape so as we are labeling this we need to label the outside of the meander that is called the river cliff the inside of the meander i always tell my students sos slip off slope it can also be known as a point bar, so do be aware of that. The flow here is slow. So a slow flow, that equals deposition. Whereas this side, there is a fast flow, so that equals erosion. We're talking mostly hydraulic action, abrasion, and in A level, we'll want to mention habitation. So as a result of that erosion, we will get undercutting. That leads to an overhang. And over time, that, will, that river cliff will collapse and the river channel will slowly migrate, in this example, to the left. So we can add in there channel migration. At A level, we're going to take us a step further. We need to understand riffles. So let's have this cross section from X to Y. Sorry, I should have labeled up here A and B. And this is going to be slightly different. We can notice I've purposely not drawn this particularly deep. That leads to these riffles being created. Because the river is less efficient here, we've got the deep water of the pools with fast flow, but it's moving to this 
next meander so the water isn't going to be as deep it's not going to be as fast following the principles of the Hullstrom curve we're going to have deposition so we need to add in the label deposition we probably want inefficient or inefficient flow and as a result we've got this deposition of the eroded material there's going to be a rough riverbed or rough channel bed and that equals we can add in we've got bed load and this might make some turbulent flow much like we see in the upper core so that is how we draw a meander from a bird's eye view and also how we draw cross sections of it.